Hi everyone, this video is the continuation of the lesson for Algebra 1 on properties of powers. And in this video I just wanted to tackle a couple of mixed practice examples that kind of combine a couple different properties, because um, these are the types of questions you're going to see on your homework. So when I look at this first one, um, I have a fraction being raised to a power. Um, and I, I don't know that we covered this in any other examples in the video, but when you're raising a fraction to a power, um, that power applies to both the top and the bottom of the fraction. So this would really become x to the negative 2 over 4 to the negative 2. Now let's think about what we know about negative exponents. Negative exponents make things switch positions within a fraction. So that means this x is going to get squared and it's going to move to the bottom of the fraction. It also means that this 4 to the negative 2 the 4 is going to get squared and move to the top of the fraction. So essentially these two things are going to switch positions. So up on the top, I'm now going to have 4 squared, which is 16. And on the bottom, I'm going to have x squared, which I just write as x squared. And that's it. Okay, so looking at this next one, um, I, I see that I have a negative exponent here, and I could start worrying about that right now, you know, in terms of, okay, everything's got to switch positions and all that. I would actually encourage you not to worry about the negatives until we get to the very end of the problem because sometimes you're going to have things that switch to negative and then switch back to being positive, and it, it's just easier to, to worry about placing everything at the end. So before I worry about this negative 3, I'm going to do some reducing inside here. I'm going to use my division rules, and remember that that means this is going to kind of divide up like this. And so 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. Um, here I'm subtracting 2 minus 9 would give me negative 7, and I'm just going to write it as a negative 7 for right now. And like I said, we'll deal with the negative thing in just a minute. And then for the r's, 5 minus 2 is 3, so this will be r to the third power. And this whole thing is still being raised to this power of negative 3. So now... I'm going to have, and I'm going to just set up a fraction bar here so that as I do this next round, I can place things correctly. So 2 to the negative third power really means I'm doing 2 to the third power. Remember, I'm not multiplying there. I'm using a power. 2 to the third power is 8. The fact that that's negative means that that 8 is going on the bottom of my fraction. Now let's do the P. So here I'm raising a power to a power, so that's multiplication. Negative 7 times negative 3 gives me positive 21. Because that came out positive, I'm putting it up on the top of the fraction. And then here, 3 times negative 3 makes negative 9, so r to the negative 9th power means that that r is going to go on the bottom of the fraction. And when I put it on the bottom, it's no longer negative. The negative is just there to be kind of a traffic director. Okay, and then that's it. That's where you would leave your final answer. Um, some people may choose to write out one more step in between where they just actually go through and do all the multiplying and then they place all their negative exponents. That's fine with me too. Okay, as many or as few steps as you need as long as you can get the answers correct. All right, so let's look at this third example. Um, I've got a power of three out here and multiplication. Order of operations tells me that I need to deal with that power of 3 first. So I'm going to raise all of these to the power of 3. And just like before, I'm not going to worry about any negatives right now. So raising a power to a power means I'm multiplying, so that's going to become a to the 12th. 2 times 3 gives me b to the 6th. And that negative 1 times 3 gives me negative 3. And I am multiplying by, and this thing doesn't have anything else that has to be done to it, so a to the negative eighth, b to the negative six, c to the fifth. Set up my fraction bar, because I know this will be my last step. a to the twelfth times a to the negative eighth. I'm multiplying, which means I'm adding my exponents. So 12 plus negative 8 is going to give me positive 4. Because it's positive, the a is going upstairs. b to the 6th times b to the negative 6. Well, 6 
over ne or six minus six or six plus negative six, that makes a zero, which really means that b just creates a one. If you really wanted to, you could put a one there to represent that b to the zero power. But essentially, those two things cancel each other out. That's what we really care about: is these two things undo each other. And then negative three plus five would give me positive two, so that po that c is also going on the top. Which means, and I, I didn't really think about this ahead of time, but this one doesn't have a denominator. There's no bottom to this fraction, so I don't even really need that fraction bar. This thing is just my answer, a to the fourth c squared. Okay. If any of those powers had come out negative at the end of the problem, then I would have put those values down in the bottom of the fraction like we did before. Okay. But because they all came out positive or they canceled out altogether, um, that's just where I would leave my answer. Okay, so like I said, your homework assignment covers several problems that are just like this. I encourage you to go slowly through them, really take your time, um, double check your work frequently, um, and make sure you're following order of operations. All right, that's it for me. Have a great day.